Greetings Gator fans, I'm Brian Montgomery, joined today by head coach Kelly Swinney of the Gator baseball teams. We preview the 2015 season. Coach, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So looking at last season, another NCAC crossover series win for the Gators, put them back in chill coffee. Um, although the team did not necessarily uh, achieve their goal of winning the NCAC tournament championship. Breakdown last season for us and how uh, the returners using it as motivation. Yeah, we had a, a very experienced pitching staff last year. Um, we, we had a very experienced team. Um, really, really proud of them. You know, it was, it was a tough ending to the season. You know, we, we really just didn't play our best baseball down the stretch. Uh, we might have hit our stride a little early mid-season, last two-thirds of the season. Um, but, you know, finished four and six, I think, in the last ten. So a little disappointing there. Um, but we played some good baseball teams at the end as well. Tough schedule. Uh, we regionally ranked the entire season, you know, the NCAA rankings. And, uh, played a really good uh, schedule. I think we we're top 50 in strength of schedule. We definitely battled to get to Chillicothe, losing the first game uh, in the crossover series, but had a good group of guys battled through that, got there. Um, didn't didn't accomplish our goal, obviously, which was to win the conference championship. Um, you know, we had a two and out, uh, which was disappointing to say the least. Um, but yeah, a lot of motivation this year. A lot of motivation to get back there. Well, obviously, it was uh, rough to lose at Chillicothe, but. Uh... We came together as a, as a team, I think, and that was a good thing for us. Like we had a good stretch where we were just winning a lot of games, and we got on a good run. Uh, obviously, we kind of faltered at the end, but uh, moving forward into this year, it's something we could really take on because we have a lot of guys coming back. Um, so I, I was proud of our guys. It didn't didn't exactly go the way we wanted to. Thought we probably played our worst weekend of baseball at the conference tournament in Chillicothe, and that was disappointing because uh, we didn't show as well as we had played earlier in the season. Um, but I, I was proud of it. We had some great accomplishments from in some individuals and the team and uh, 127 games. That's the most since I think 2001. So um, we, we've taken steps to get the program back in the regional rankings and now it's taking that final step, winning the conference tournament, getting in the NCAA tournament back to where we want to be. So a little bittersweet. It was a good year, but it, it just didn't finish the way we wanted it to. Yeah, and then you mentioned that pitching staff uh, losing some, several, key, mm -hmm. several key starters. Eric Brandt, uh, Kyle Davis, who ended up signing a professional contract with the Washington yeah. Wild Things here in PA, and then also Brandon Ellis. But then you returned several key starters. Uh, last year, uh, Chase Boyer, who won Newcomer mm -hmm. of the Year, Steve Ramsdell, who had an all NCAC season. Mm -hmm. Just kind of take us through that that pitching staff. What are you expecting from them this year? Yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. We have a great sophomore class. Um, some of them got some experience. Chase pitched a lot, was probably easily could have been one of our top four starters, but he was so valuable coming out of the pen the first time we needed him every weekend in the NCAC. Um, he's going to move into the number one starter role. Um, Steven is, you know, as steady as it gets for us. We're really happy um, for with him and where he's at. He's going to be our number two starter. Uh, again, kind of the same role as last year. Um, but these sophomores, it's, it's exciting. It's kind of like going back to when Davis and Brandon Ellis and Pizzone, all those guys were sophomores. Um, but we just have so much more depth uh, now this year than we had last year. Um, and, and so I'm excited about that. We'll, we'll see uh, Corey Marshall's come a long way. He's going to be a, a, a top guy. Uh, Zach Hale's worked extremely hard. I'm really happy for him. He got some innings last year. He's worked hard. Um, you see sophomores, uh, Corey Keenan, uh, Rob Julian. Uh, Pat Orr, we, those guys are all in the mix. They're all having a good fall. Had a good fall, having great winners for us. So we have six, seven options for our starting guys, and then I think the rest of it will play out into the bullpen. Um, Paul Wojtek, senior, ton of innings. He's been been pitching out of the bullpen since his freshman year. Um, you know, he'll be a key guy out of the bullpen. Then we might get a little young in the bullpen with some of our freshmen who are guys who will be starters in the future, but. Uh, they'll probably help us out of the pen a little bit. Uh, Hayden Smith converted from uh, catcher to pitcher. He pitched a lot in high school and, you know, growing up, and we converted him. He had a really good fall, so he's a guy that could come out of the pen and eat some innings. So I just feel really good about the, the depth. Uh, it's going to take time. I have to be patient as a coach. You know, when, when we had Brant and Ellis and Davis, you know, Davis was great from day one, but Brant and Ellis and Pizzone, those guys took some time to develop. They had to get innings under their belt. Uh, face quality college hitters to find out how to get those guys out. So I know there'll be some ups and downs early in the season with these guys, but the the, the overall picture is really, I'm really excited. We're really high on the, the pitching staff. Uh, well, we've been working really hard all throughout the off season and into this preseason here. Uh, we also brought in a lot of couple freshmen that are pretty good. So we've been developing them and they should be up ready to step up their game this year. And uh, we're looking forward to everyone else just picking up their games and filling those roles that we lost last year. Yeah. And then you look at that infield, that's where really a lot of the returners are coming. Mm -hmm. You have Adam Bronson at a catcher, uh, Ben Murray at first, Zach Gray at second, uh, Joe Killian at third, mm -hmm. and pretty much that entire infield has been fortified the last couple of years, and that we saw a lot of offense also mm -hmm. from that infield. Kind of take us through that. For, for you as a coach, it's got to be 
a good confidence builder to know that infield is still concrete and that you still have a good core of returners coming back. Yeah, I think that's why we feel good about this year. You know, we, we have a lot of experience coming back in the field. You know, we you obviously lose a Mike Pizzone or Kyle Davis in the field. Th those are key guys, but we have a lot of experience back. Bronson's going to have to be a workhorse back there and catch most of the innings. Um, Pat Orr, who I mentioned being on the mound, and uh, he'll be a, a backup. Uh, Chase Davis, a freshman, is there kind of battling for that backup spot. But uh, Bronson's going to have to be the workhorse back there and be a middle of the lineup guy. Uh, ben Murray was very clutch for us and, and really did well for us last year. At first, um, charging hard behind him are sophomores Shea Beaumont and Kyle Emerson. Um, Kyle uh, got two hits, I think, the last day against DePaul in the conference tournament, first hits of his career, and uh, he just kept getting better throughout his freshman year, and that really helped and you know helped us and going into this year. Uh, Shea Beaumont's a power lefty. Um, so we have some depth at first. I kind of expect two of those three guys to be in the lineup, one at first and one at DH. And the righty lefty will matter because they're both right, you know, uh, Murray and uh, Beaumont are lefty hitters and Emerson's a righty. Uh, Zach Gray did everything for us last year. He played second, he played center field, he played left field. He would do anything for us. Uh, team captain along with Bronson and Wojtek. And, uh, just excited to get him back in the infield. He's looked really good and uh, just, just a selfless player, great hitter. He's been a, one of those pesky guys that you can't get out for four years now and, and we're just excited to have his experience back. Uh, Jake Schick played second last year. He'll bump over to shortstop. Um, he, he was a really solid player, probably one of the best freshmen in the entire conference and uh, excited about him. Good athlete, good hands, uh, great leader, uh, even as a sophomore, so he, he'll be a short for us. Third base got Joe back, and he was NCAC Newcomer of the Year. Um, his numbers probably don't show how good he was last year. He really struggled the first third of the year, and in the last two thirds of the year, he picked it up and batted probably high 300s for us. So, um, so he, he'll be a steady guy back at third for us. And uh, we have some guys giving us some depth. Robert DiMaggio is a middle infielder who we'll probably talk about when we talk about the outfielders, um, but he can back up short, back up second. Um, Corey Keenan, we talked about him pitching. He can play middle infield. He can play third base as well. I have a couple nice uh, freshman third baseman, uh, Cy Perry, who's been hitting the ball really well. And then uh, Jamison Murray is, is, is probably our best defensive third baseman. Really good hands, good arm, um, and he's a pitcher as well. Uh, so we, we have some, some quality depth there, um, and, and we're really excited about the infield. And, and there's a lot, of, a lot of competition, and I think that breeds you know, winning baseball and you know, guys that can handle pressure, guys that are ready to compete for a job, and, and the guys that come through that process are going to really be quality players. I like, the depth, I like the depth, and I also like the energy. The energy is a lot different from last year as far as we got you know, guys who want to catch, and we have guys who, um, who are, are gritty and, and who are tough and who will uh, dig out those long innings that when we need them. And, you know, and there's some guys who, who really, truly like to play the position. I mean, I, it should be pretty self-motivated. They have an opportunity to play right away. They have an opportunity. Um, certain guys are doing really, really well. Um, and, and, you know, we were young last year as well. We got a lot of sophomores, pitchers, position players that are, that are going to play big roles on the team this year, and, and they have confidence in themselves to do it. Um, but also just kind of, uh, you know, mentoring the younger guys, showing them just how to, how to do th certain things, whether it's, it's defensively or offensively. Um, and, and they're smart guys. They're good baseball players. Uh, we, have, we have a good young group of guys. Um, so it's not much work for us as, as upperclassmen. We just kind of show them what to do, and, and they're very good at what they do. Um, so, so confidence. We have confidence in every guy. And then we look at that outfield. You look at Mike Pazone, who was really a staple mm -hmm. out there in the yes. outfield last year. But again, a lot of returners that can kind mm -hmm. of help this really robust freshman class mm -hmm. as they get themselves acclimated to the college game takes through that outfield. Yeah, we, we have uh, Matt Sardini is a junior, uh, been a, a contributor since his freshman year, ha has been having uh, some nagging injuries both years, uh, was started and started well for us last year in the beginning of the year before he got hurt. Um, so he's looking to man, you know, take one of those positions in the outfield. DiMaggio, Robert DiMaggio is a, just a good athlete. A lot of these guys are kind of reoccurring theme. They're good athletes and we can move them around and get the best guys in the lineup, the best offensive guys. But he's going to play left. He played left for us um, in the fall and uh, he'll probably lead off for us. And, and, you know, I think eventually he may go back to the infield, but he's just a versatile guy that we got to get in the lineup somehow. Um, and then uh, center field uh, could be Sardini. Uh, we have Dan Bonnet, who's a, who's a freshman, who's probably the, one of the fastest guys on the team. Uh, big, tall, strong kid. So look for him to do big things throughout his career. Had a great fall and penciled him in the, in the starting position in the, the entire fall and winter here. Um, but we have Colin Flaherty, he's another uh, freshman switch hitter. Um, really tough, hard-nosed, competitive kid, and 
he's really been blossoming here in the winter for us. So I know he's going to be a staple in the outfield, whether it's this year or years to come. And so he'll be in the mix as well. And then there's guys like Pat Orr. You know, I mentioned him as a pitcher, mentioned him as a catcher. He can play left field, and he's been working out there. So uh, another guy who's had an, an exceptional uh, winner for us is um, uh, Dawson, Andrew Dawson. And he's uh, mainly a right fielder, great, great athlete, good arm. And he's really come a long way at the plate. And that's exciting to see him really coming hard, nipping it, uh, Sardini and Bonnet and those guys' heels. And then you look at the schedule this upcoming spring, it is just a complete, completely difficult schedule. Spring break, which this year stacked with squash with the Suniac, mm -hmm. along with a whole bunch of other difficult teams. And then finally you come back and the normal mm -hmm. opponents from Mount Union, and then you enter NCAC play. Just for, for, the, for your team and, and looking at that schedule, it's got to be one of those outstanding opportunities mm -hmm. for you to know not only are if you get there to the point where you're sitting at a, above a 25 point season mm -hmm. you're going to be sitting pretty possibly for an NCAA at large bit knowing that you have this comp like this competitive schedule mm -hmm. right on the horizon yeah we you know we found out last year in the regional rankings and the the the, the criteria consist continually changes a little bit you know not a lot but uh, strength of schedule was huge last year. You look at four and four OAC teams got in. You know, John Carroll was an upset winner in the tournament and got in, um, but th three other teams got at larges and they were all top 20 in the nation in strength of schedule. I thought we were pretty good there in the top 50, um, but you know, those are the type of teams we have to play. And I think if you, if you want to be the best, you kind of got to play the best. And I was looking at the schedule the other day and thinking half of our games are against teams that have been in the NCAA tournament within the last two years. You know, and that's that's where we want to be. So if we can beat those teams, and I think we competed well last year. We were, I think, two and one against nationally ranked opponents, and our guys rise up to those those challenges. And so we're really looking forward to it. I, I know it's going to be difficult, but at the same time, yes, if we can get to 25 plus wins and play that schedule, I think we'll be right in the mix in the regional rankings and hopefully pushing for the NCAA tournament. So then, looking right now, overall, the team is about you know a week away from starting off the season in Virginia. Looking at the squad, looking at the preseason, just everything in one big picture. Kind of, what are your expectations as the coach as you're heading into the 2015 season? Just excited. I know this is a team that's going to grow and keep getting better each week. Um, we've really worked hard on the mental aspect of the game and leadership and things when you have a, a, a predominantly sophomore freshman roster that you know that's going to, you know, they're going to have to learn those things. They're going to go through some tough times and how they handle it and how they respond is going to be a big part of how well we do this season. So um, I'm just excited. I think when I was a younger coach, you get a little worried when you have a, a, some, some change and turnover, but, um, you know, as I get a little bit older coaching, I just look forward to it because I know we've got great talent and I know that we can compete and it'll just be how quickly, you know, everything clicks for them and how, how they respond to those tough challenges. But yeah, just, just overall, I think the coaching staff's just extremely excited about the season. Yeah, well, anything less of a championship to me is, is not a success. Oh, we're going to win the conference championship this year. So it's just going to be keep hard, working hard and winning the first game every day. And like I said, I really believe that we can do it. Um, I don't think that there's a guy one through 40 that doubts in that. Um, and I really think that, that this year is our year to get over that hump, as Coach Swinney always says. Um, we have a great team. We're talented. We have a lot of depth. Uh, if we put it, put it together ment mentally and physically, we can have the season we need to have, and we can make it, and we can climb the mountain. All right, well, Coach, thank you so much for joining us, and best of luck to you this upcoming year. All right, thank you. Thank you for having me. And Gator fans, be sure to keep it locked into AlleghenyGators.com for all of your up-to-date Gators stuff.